I now have the great pleasure of introducing an alumnus who truly embodies the leadership's success and spirit of innovation that is reflective of our community. Today's commencement speaker, Dr. Randall, Randall W. Poston. Randy holds a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD in civil engineering from the Cockrell School of Engineering. He is a structural engineer and the founding senior principal of Austin-based consulting firm, Pivot Engineers. Randy has ex executed numerous notable projects, including the repair and seismic strengthening of the Marina Del Rey seawall, for which he received the International Concrete Repair Institute Project of the Year Award. He chaired the American Concrete Institute's Structural Building Code Committee and is currently serving as a vice president. In 2008, Randy was inducted into the Department of Civil, Architectural, and Environmental Engineering's Academy of Distinguished Alumni. He was named a Distinguished Engineering Graduate of the Cockrell School in 2014, and just this year he was elected into the National Academy of Engineering. Randy, you have made a tremendous impact on your industry and on the Texas engineering community, and your success continues to inspire our students. We are honored to have you here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Randy Poston. Thank you very much, Dean Wood, for the nice introduction. Uh, Dean Wood, uh, Cockerell School uh, department heads and uh, faculty, uh, distinguished engineering, engineering graduates, uh, graduates of the 2017 class, family, friends, and guests of the graduates, and anyone who unwittingly came into the uh, Irwin Center expecting to see a basketball game tonight. <laughs> I, I extend my welcome on this great occasion. If you did think you were here to see a basketball game, I think this would be a great opportunity for you to exit stage left. And uh, t it's a perfect time so you can avoid the uh, extra time you might watching the 1,100 graduates or so walking across the stage to receive their diploma. This is unquestionably one of the greatest honors of my career, to be giving the uh, commencement address at the Concrell School from which I graduated. Dean Wood, I do have to ask you, though, knowing how tight budgets are at all universities, I'm wondering if this was a cost-cutting measure. I'm, I'm thinking that I was asked to deliver the commencement address as I live in Austin, and the school could save on some travel expenses. <laughs> is, is that true? No matter the reason, it is a great privilege and honor to have been asked to speak at this convocation. Although I've given hundreds of talks and presentations over my career, this has to be one of the most difficult tasks that I've ever had to do. What would graduates want to hear from me? I can discuss the obvious things, uh, such as you clearly pass much muster by virtue of the fact that you're graduating, not only graduating with an engineering degree at a time when the U.S. is in dire need of intellectual capital and in science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, and that you are graduating with a degree uh, uh, from one of the top engineering schools in the country, as evidenced by the recent very recent U.S. News and World Report ranking showing the UT Graduate Engineering Program at number nine in the U.S. and seven, and seven departments rank in the top ten. Uh, by all measures, this is a landmark event in your life, uh, one that your family, friends, and classmates can celebrate with special pride of a accomplishment. I can relate to your accomplishment because I was sitting in your exact seat 39 years ago. The only thing that separates us is time. I know what you're thinking. This guy is way too young to have graduated 39 years ago. <laughs> well, this one degree of separation between you and the 2000 and myself and the 2017 Cockrell School graduates, the old guy that I speak of, isn't quite as simplistic as it may seem, as I've had the benefit and experience of a very fulfilling career between 1978 and tonight. Of course, what we do have in common is an education of the first class from the Cockrell School. You will soon be able to reflect on that and appreciate this gift. Instead of focusing tonight on the obvious accomplishment of graduating from the Cockrell School and what it will mean throughout your career, I want to focus my remarks on three things. The myth, the misconception, and the truth about your graduation and your career. Naturally, much of what I'm going to discuss is based on what I've experienced during my career as a consulting structural engineer in private practice, but I've been very fortunate to have many colleagues and friends uh, in very different paths with engineering backgrounds. 
As a graduate in engineering, you are uniquely positioned to do just about anything you want and at about any time you want. So with strict orders to limit my remarks to less than 10 minutes, let me first present the myth. You will likely be sitting, sitting in a cubicle in isolation working on a design, a problem, or a difficult case without the benefit of collaboration with others. This is highly unlikely. Just as you benefited from working with others on your research and in uh, study sessions or on your senior design project, engineering by its nature is a very collaborative uh, discipline. Not all problems that you will face are necessarily complex or complicated. The nature of engineering practice and the research benefit from the interaction of a group, though. The fact is you have learned the basic tools that you can utilize in whatever career path you decide. But your development as an engineer, a technical guru, a business executive, a lawyer, a doctor, or management consultant, whatever you decide to be, will ultimately be based on your ability to make decisions and often with greater risk. Not all situations and problems can be solved by a simple equation or even by a more complicated analysis uh, where all the parameters are known. As you develop in your career, uh, you will increasingly develop the skills to knowledgeably assume inputs uh, that are not well known. You will discover that your problem solving skill had its roots in all the homework, lectures, tests, of, and, your, and your coursework. You will learn that in order to accept more and more responsibility in your jobs, you will need to better evaluate the risk of the decisions with which you are confronted. Now let me relay the misconception. Your first job will be your last job. This will likely not be the case. I grew up at a time when this adage was, in fact, uh, the norm. One would at, go to work at, for a company, or at most maybe two, over uh, his or her career. Uh, my outlook on, on life and the ability to adapt to different situations and responsibilities uh, had its early roots with my parents, were, who were in the military, and by definition were told where to go and when to go. The fact is, we live in a very different time. I read recently in a trade publication that an engineer today will have on average seven different positions during his or her career. I'm apparently that average engineer that that publication uh, was referring to as I started a new business venture just two and a half years ago. It was the second consulting engineering firm that I had started and this was in fact my seventh career position. This is the most exciting time of my career because I'm sharing my experience and expertise with a young engineering team that wants to build a great and highly respected structural engineering consulting firm. I see providing leadership to accomplish this goal as my most important role of my career. As a corollary to this misconception, you should in fact embrace the notion that your first job is likely not to be your last job. You should keep in your eyes and minds open to the possibilities of change. Although change is antithetical to the typical engineer's persona, change can be good for many reasons, including added responsibilities, additional compensation, and the sense of rejuvenation. Uh, although there may be risk, a shift can result in new challenges and result in a new outlook on work. It provides a, a fresh and unexpected experience for you, your family, and yourself. Change will become less about what you think you want and more about what you know you want. I know that for me that it became important to associate myself with talented people that, ha that have the desire to make significant engineering contributions and about living and raising a family in a location where we were comfortable both at work and in life. It is my belief that you must have a balance in work and personal life to be successful. I have continued to be shaped uh, by my thinking, uh, in my thinking by being active in national and international organizations and committees, which allow me to learn a broad perspective of how engineers in other countries outside the U.S. think and allows me the opportunity of traveling with my family. Traveling has provided me with unique experiences that have critically shaped my view of work, uh, my family, and the world. And finally, the truth. I know with certainty that each of you is going to have a rewarding career, no matter your path. Graduation from the Cockrell School is undoubtedly one of the most uh, proudest moments in your life and your families. I know this uh, as I, I've often been asked what I'm most proud of in my career. And that's easy, despite having many accolades, my proudest accomplishment 
as an engineer is having graduated from the University of Texas at Austin Cockrell School of Engineering. L let, me I trust you feel equally proud of your accomplishment. With time, no matter what you do as you advance in your career, you will, become, you will come to realize how important your education has been. It has shaped your thinking in ways you will learn to appreciate, and perhaps in ways that you may actually never fully understand. One thing that is certain, no one can ever take away what you have achieved in this graduation this evening. One additional addition to this truth is, that I have wrestled with a few times in my career is to respect your gut feeling. There will be times where you feel trapped in a position or in a situation. It takes great inner strength to, uh, inner strength to rediscover what I term the Cockrell School DNA that we share. No matter where one is in his or her career, you have been given the gift and the ability to control your destiny. Please, if there's one thing to remember this evening, it is that. Remember that you, and only you, are in full control of your career and your success. So in closing, as a commencement speaker, I trust I have been given a bit of latitude, so I want to do a shout out to my family, especially my daughter, Emily, who is receiving her master's degree this evening. Your mother and I are very proud of you and excited about your accomplishments, but we are also happy about getting you off the payroll. <laughs> Numerous colleagues have told me this will be the biggest pay raise of my career. As I conclude my address this evening, I want to once again sincerely congratulate every graduate. It is an event that you should be proud of and undoubtedly will take you far. Thank you and hook them. <laughs>